Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2021 Ford Edge, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Draw Tight Max Frame Trailer Hitch Receiver. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure that this is something that's gonna work for you. So right off the bat, you know, these edges uh, are, are really good looking SUVs. And even though the hitch is going to be visible, it really isn't all that noticeable. You know, it sits a little bit further back and when you're actually standing up looking at the back of the edge, you know, it doesn't pop out at you. It's not a big sore thumb uh, on the back of your Ford. With that said though, you know, people use these SUVs to do a little bit of everything, whether you're, you know, pulling a, a trailer behind you or using accessories like a bike rack or cargo carrier, you're gonna want a hitch that can get the job done and do all those things. One of the big questions that we do get asked is if whenever you put the hitch on the back of your edge, is it going to affect the hands-free liftgate assist? And the answer is no. Now, unfortunately today, our uh, model does not come equipped with that feature, but I do personally know from past experience um, that it is gonna work. All you're gonna have to do is either kick your foot to one side of the hitch or the other to get it to function properly. Something that I do wanna mention, since the hitch does sit a little bit further back, we're not gonna have a ton of clearance in regards to the bumper. So if you do plan on using a folding accessory, something just to keep in mind. Now, thankfully, a lot of the folding accessories out today kind of take that into consideration, and a lot of them have a long shank, which um, shouldn't really give you a ton of issues if that's the case. It should be more than enough to clear your back bumper whenever you store them in that upright position. Since this is a class three hitch, it's gonna give us that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. It's a super common size and a ton of different accessories will work with it. It's going to have the standard 5 8 pinhole. Keep in mind though, a pin and clip does not come included, but if you need one, you can grab it here at E-Trailer. I am a fan of the safety chain openings. They're a plate style and they're really large. And these are gonna allow us to use you know, pretty much any size hook that we might have. The hitch is gonna give us some pretty good weight capacities. As far as the maximum gross tongue weight rating goes, that's gonna be 600 pounds. And that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So it's a pretty high number and you should be able to use pretty much any size bike rack or cargo carrier uh, that you'd want to, for example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's gonna be 4,000 pounds. And that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of the trailer plus anything that you might have on it. And this can be used with the weight distribution system, which is a separate component. And when you use that, what it's gonna do is help keep your Ford and your trailer nice and level whenever you're going down the road. Keep in mind though, even if you use that weight distribution system, the weight ratings are going to remain the same at 604,000. With all that said, I do suggest, uh, never a bad idea to grab your owner's manual. That way you can make sure your edge can pull out much weight safely. And when you are pulling a trailer, you are gonna want the light sword. That way you're safe and legal. And to accomplish that, you can check out some trailer wire. And what's nice, if you do end up picking up trailer wiring, the hitch already has a pre-attached bracket on it. That way you can mount your wiring up and not have to worry too much about it. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of measurements and you can use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's gonna be about 12 and a half inches. So if you do plan on doing some towing, chances are really good you're gonna to need to get a ball mount that has a rise in the shank. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's gonna be about six inches. And you can use that measurement to figure out exactly if any of those folding accessories you do have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. So at the end of the day, it you really can't go wrong with. It's gonna look good and function just as well. Now, as far as the installation goes, uh, at least in my opinion, out of all the hitches available for the edge, this one is the most simple. Uh, really not a whole lot involved, honestly. So as long as you take your time, really shouldn't give you a whole lot of issues. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here underneath the bottom of our edge. And first thing we need to do is remove the panels that are located on the sides. There's gonna be four fasteners holding them in and we're gonna to need to pull those out. 
The first two are gonna be right here along this bottom edge. So these two will need a five and a half millimeter socket to remove. We'll back those out. And then we can switch over to a 10 millimeter socket. We're gonna have two nuts there. Get these pulled off. Grab the panel and temporarily remove it. And I wanna mention from this point on, anything we do to one side of the vehicle, we're also gonna to do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. We are gonna to need to lower our exhaust a little bit. That way we have more room to work. It's a good idea to support it uh, before we do that though. So I just took a strap, ran it from side to side and tighten it up a little bit. That way we can kind of control how fast and how far we let the exhaust come down. To actually lower the exhaust, we're gonna have two rubber isolator hangers, just like this. So one over here on the passenger side and the same exact setup over on the driver's side. I'm gonna lubricate these with some soapy water, some penetrating oil to make it easier. And then we can take a pry bar and just work that hanger off of the metal portion there. So once both sides are removed, you can kind of adjust the strap as necessary to give us that space that we need. Now if you look on the side of our frame rail, we're going to have this oval shaped hole closest to the front of our vehicle. We're going to be using this as an access hole, that way we can get our hardware inside of the frame rail. Only problem is, whenever we take our bolts, the head of the bolt is too big to fit through there. The spacer block will fit through just fine, but that bolt won't. So there's a couple things we can do. We can either kind of try to pry on this a little bit to make it bigger. What I prefer though is just to enlarge it. Uh, so you can use a hand file or to speed things up if you have a tool like this, um, you can do that as well. So I'm just going to remove a little bit of material and make it just large enough that we're able to fit our bolts through. So every now and again, just stop, take your carriage bolt and make sure that it'll fit through the opening. So about like that is exactly uh, the size that we need it to be. So now to get our hardware in place, uh, we're gonna be using a fish wire and we're gonna be using these two holes as attachment points. I'm gonna start with this one closest to the back of the vehicle. Take the coil end of the fish wire, and we're gonna push it towards the hole that we enlarged, our access hole. And what we're trying to do is get that coil end to come out. Once you have it out, you're gonna take your spacer block, slide it over, and then you're gonna thread the carriage bolt on. We can then feed the hardware inside of the frame rail. It'll pull on the other end of the wire. Make sure it comes out freely. And then we're just gonna barely set it back inside of the frame. That way it doesn't interfere with our hitch when we go to put it up. So I'm gonna do that same thing for this one here. Just kind of a quick uh, tip. What I like to do is just kind of eyeball the length then kind of put a bend in it and that usually helps us come the end come out a little bit easier it doesn't come right out you may have to kind of reach up there and help guide it but with that said I'm gonna take the same hardware combination and get it uh, in place as well Not the next set of hands, we can take our hitch and get it into position. What you want to do is take the corresponding pull wires, push them through the holes in the hitch from the inside out. And 
once you have uh, both sides through the hitch, what you can do is raise it up and you want to kind of pull the slack out of the, the fish wires while you're lifting this up. lined up. We can pull our bolts through. And usually when you haven't pulled through the weight of the hitch is enough to kind of support itself. What we're going to do though is remove one of the pull wires. We're gonna take a conical tooth washer, make sure the teeth on the washer are gonna to face towards the hitch. Carefully put it over that bolt. And I'm gonna apply a little side pressure to keep that bolt from moving. And take a hex nut and get it started. And we're just gonna do the same thing for this attachment point as well. With all the hardware in place and hand tight, you can come back with a 19 millimeter socket and snug everything down. Once everything's snug, we need to make sure and come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all of the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. Now when it comes to the underbody panels, you have a couple of options. You can either leave them off or you can trim them a little bit and reinstall them. And we're gonna do just that. This spot here, we're gonna cut out. There's a diagram and instructions. It's pretty thin plastic, so I'm just gonna use a pair of snips to get that area removed. With the panel cut out, we can reinstall them the opposite way, with one exception. Uh, with this part removed, obviously we're not going to be installing the other 10 millimeter nut that was located up in this area. The three fasteners is more than enough to hold it in place and keep it secure. Now we can go ahead, rehang our exhaust. So you spray them down again. This time we're just going to line them up by hand, slide them right over the rubber hangers and once the exhaust is supporting itself we'll go ahead and remove our strap and that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the draw tight max frame trailer hitch receiver on our 2021 ford edge